As anglers, we've all been in a situation where we're throwing lure after lure after lure in a spot that we know has feeding fish, but we still can't get them to strike. And even worse, we could be using lures that we've seen work on somebody's YouTube or Instagram, or you could even be in a boat with somebody that's using the same lure as you and they're catching fish and you're not. And it leaves you wondering, is it the lure? Is it me? What could be going wrong here? And chances are, it's one of three very simple mistakes that I see a lot of people make when they're using artificial lures. And they can be very easily remedied, but you just have to know what those mistakes are. So I wanted to make this video for you guys today so you could understand how to correct these mistakes and catch those uncatchable fish. So I wanna start first with the easily corrected but commonly committed mistake, and that's bad rigging. Now, at its simplest form, it could just be putting a soft plastic lure on wrong. So just to give you an example right here, we've got a soft plastic jerk bait that's been rigged incorrectly here this is one that's been rigged correctly now understanding the premise that this is going to move naturally through the water when we twitch it and bounce it and it's going to look like something a fish is going to want to eat and when we work this one because it's been rigged incorrectly it's going to helicopter and spin around and it's not going to look like a living organism that a fish is going to want to eat and the same thing is going to occur when we rig a paddle tail incorrectly or we pull the shank up too far or we use a jig shank that's too long for the paddle tail that we're fishing but Something that a lot of people don't realize is that your knot can actually affect the action of a lure as well. And this is probably the most common mistake I see. People will tie on twitch baits with snug knots. Understand that when you work a twitch bait, it's not meant to move forward. It's meant to dart erratically when you twitch the rod tip. So you can just as badly make the mistake of rigging a soft plastic incorrectly by doing this and you can make the exact same mistake of affecting the lure's action by the knot that you use. I actually have a post on the correct knots to use with each type of lure. I'll link it below so that you guys can reference that as well. That's a whole nother subject. I don't wanna to dive too deep into that, but just understanding that every little thing that you do from the knots that you tie to the jig shank that you use to the way that you rig your soft plastics is all going to affect the action of a lure. And if it doesn't look natural in the water, if it doesn't provide that nice erratic action that it's been designed to, you're likely not gonna get as many strikes. And someone fishing the exact same lure next to you might have a different knot tied on. You might not notice that and they're gonna catch fish and you're not because their lure has action and yours doesn't. Now the next mistake I see people making is choosing the wrong profile, size, or color of lure. And I just group all those together into one mistake and that's selecting the wrong lure for the situation that you're in. Now I wanna talk about profile first because I do believe it is the most important of the three that I mentioned. Basically profile is the type of bait you're trying to imitate. So you've got crustacean profiles and bait fish profiles. Pretty much crabs and shrimp fall under crustacean and your, your minnows, your mullet, all small little fin fish are gonna fall under your bait fish profiles. Now you might be asking yourself, which one should I use and when? And I, basically the easiest answer to that is if you're seeing a specific type of bait actively being attacked by predators, so if you're seeing redfish attacking shrimp, or if you're seeing trout blowing up minnows, I would throw whatever bait you're seeing is being attacked. Just because you see a type of bait doesn't mean that's what you should throw, but I would throw whatever you're seeing attacked. Now, another good rule of thumb, if you're not seeing anything, you're not sure, you're blind casting without much idea of exactly what's going on under the water. Generally, in the colder months, crustacean style baits are better because bait fish are not as prevalent in the late fall, winter, and early spring. Now, in the inverse of that, in the warmer months, there's tons of small bait fish in the early spring. And then as it starts to warm up even more, the year progresses, they get bigger. So you start wanting to transition to larger bait fish profiles in the late summer and early fall. Now that I, does lead into my next category, which is size. Now you wanna make sure that if you're seeing a specific type of bait, you give a profile that is equally as large or larger to what you're seeing. So like I said, in the late summer, we're gonna have all those small finger mullet that grow up to be pretty big. And this is actually a bait I will throw in the early to mid fall range because there's big flounder that are looking for some big paddle tails. They're after large mullet. And this is exactly the profile that they are most dialed into feeding on. Now on the inverse of that, if you are fishing in the early spring and there's tons of small bait fish around, a three inch paddle tail is one of the deadliest lures that you can use because all of those small bait fish have just spawned and you want to match that profile as close as you can. If you're using one of these big paddle tails in the early spring, you're likely not gonna get any hits. It's gonna spook off those larger predators because this is not what they're used to eating. They probably won't even touch it. Now, if you're throwing this in the mid early fall, you know, you probably won't get much attention. Those predators are dialed into those high calorie meals. They might pass this up 
up. They don't want to expend energy for a small opportunity. So now to talk about color selection, and this is a complex subject. We've covered in hour long podcast videos, and I could do another video on mistakes with color selection if you guys would like, but I want to give a quick crash course on it here right now, just because we are on the topic of mistakes. Uh, essentially what you're going to see in clear water is higher success with lures that have more natural or light colors. And then when you get into the darker water, you're going to want something that holds a darker silhouette, or you're going to want something that has a lot of light reflection. So there's higher visibility. Now to kind of break that down in clear water, what you have is less color reduction. As light penetrates the surface of the water, the true color that we're seeing above the surface is more reflected as you go under the surface. Now that's going to change as you go deeper, even in the clearest of waters, some of that color is going to get reduced and eventually it's going to turn to almost a gray black. All colors as you go deeper in the water eventually do turn to black. Uh, it's just a depending on what color you choose, how early that's going to happen. So for example, red is going to disappear generally from eight to 10 feet, even in the clearest of water. So if you fish an all red lure, make sure you're only fishing it shallow. Otherwise, it's just going to come up as a, a black lure. And you don't want that to happen in clear water because fish are going to pick up on a sharp contrast much more quickly in that clear water and it's not going to look natural. So if I was fishing this next to a bunch of glass minnows that have that silver body and that black back, this would look very odd because it would look like an entirely black lure. So I wouldn't want to fish this in clear water. What I would opt to choose for instead is something like this that's got a bunch of natural colors on it, These this dark purple back, it's got some patterns along the side, and this white and greenish belly, even a little bit of red towards the nose. So if I was fishing this shallow, this could be a good option because all the little nuances on this lure are going to be picked up on by fish. And it's going to be very enticing to them, even the red eyes. So that's what I would opt for in the shallow clear water. Now, if we start moving into the dirty water, there's much more color reduction and there's more rules that we're going to be applying here because it is going to be affecting what fish are going to see. Now, as we get into that dirty water, most of those colors are going to start to disappear. Generally, the only colors that are going to be holding on to anything are the white and the chartreuse, which is why I said a color that is going to reflect more light. So if you've ever worn a white t-shirt on a hot day, you'll notice that you don't get as hot as your friends that are wearing darker t-shirts. That's because the light that is bouncing off your shirt is again being reflected. So it's more likely that fish are going to be able to see this because it has more visibility to it. Now behind white on that color reduction spectrum chart is green green and yellow and chartreuse is a combination of those colors. So white would be my first choice. And if I didn't have white, I would go with chartreuse. Now talking about some other options for dark water. Again, we talked earlier about this lure that would not be good for clear water because again, it would offer a sharp contrast. If you don't have white or chartreuse, I would pick the darkest lure in your tackle box because it's going to provide a outline instead of disappearing into the blackness like you would likely see with this shrimp lure, it would just fade basically away into the darkness of that water, this is going to provide a sharp outline and a silhouette. So you really have two choices in darker water. You're gonna want something that reflects light or something that gives a good silhouette against the actual dark green or dark brown because this is going to have that very good contrast. So that just kind of gives you guys a primer on all of the different types of colors you could choose. And there's even more scenarios that would opt for different types of colors. And like I said, I can cover that in a different video, but let's move on to the next mistake. So the third and final mistake I see people making with artificial lures is improper presentation. And the two big ways that people do that is they're fishing at the wrong depth, so you're not getting in the strike zone. Or number two, you are in the strike zone, but you're retrieving incorrectly, and the fish doesn't see it as a natural presentation and therefore won't strike. So talking about the depth that you wanna be fishing, this is going to be dependent on the season. Obviously in the warmer months, you're gonna to wanna to look for fish that are a little bit deeper, they're looking for cooler water, or if you're fishing a specific type of structure, you know, a grass flat that does have oxygen and fish will hold on in the warmer months, so it is a shallow area, you need to be cognizant of what jig head you're using. If you're dragging a 1 4 ounce jig head along the bottom of a grass flat, you're pulling up grass, it's just not gonna make for a natural presentation. And typically those predators are sitting at the bottom waiting to ambush things that are swimming over the grass. So a 3 16 ounce jig head over the grass would likely make for a more natural presentation for let's say trout that are hiding in that grass. Now, if you're fishing for flounder under a bridge, you're not gonna wanna be using a weedless fluke because you're not gonna be able to get to the bottom. So you wanna make sure that you're using a 1 4 ounce jig head so you can get to the bottom and you can get in their strike zone. 
Now, in terms of presentation, most lures do have a specific retrieve that you're gonna wanna learn and get proficient with so you can get the most action out of that lure. And then some will perform better in shallow water versus deeper water because of that retrieve or that action that it has. But if you're looking for something that you can use in a wide variety of scenarios with multiple retrieves, I recommend that you pick yourself up a generalist lure like a paddle tail. It's pretty much impossible to fish this incorrectly and you can fish it at multiple depths by changing out the weight of the jig head. You can fish as shallow as less than a foot of water with some weedless hooks and still get some really good action out of this lure. It's impossible to retrieve it wrong. It has action all the way through a straight retrieve to a stop and go. There's a lot of action on the fall, twitch, twitch, pause, fast, slow. It's impossible to fish it incorrectly because again, it has so much action. And in terms of selecting the correct appearance that we talked about with mistake number two, this color works great under pretty much any scenario. In clear water, it's a very natural white with a little bit of flash to it. And then in darker water, it's got that flash as well, but also the white was the most reflective in terms of color reduction that we were talking about earlier, right in front of chartreuse. Chartreuse was number two and three with green and yellow, which are those colors that compromise it, but white was still leading at number one. So I tend to use this pretty much in any scenario. I can fish it with multiple retrieves, and it's just, like I said, pretty much impossible to fish this incorrectly. But I wanna talk back to mistake number one, make sure you're using a loop knot with pretty much any kind of swim bait you're using, just because it's going to just give it a lot more action, even when it's falling, if you are doing that stop and go retrieve or a twitch, twitch, pause. And then there you go. All three of the mistakes we talked about today are eliminated by using a simple lure like a paddle tail. So I recommend you guys pick some of these up, especially if you're gonna get a, a color that's gonna work under a wide variety of scenarios, it's hard to beat the Slam Shady. And if you do want some different size options, we do have it in the five inch uh, option from Z-Man in our Salt Strong shop. So if you guys would like to pick some up there, I'll link that below. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you were able to learn something. If you would like to see some tutorials on how to use all of these lures and some more scenarios under which they would work best, as well as how to pick the correct spots for redfish, trout, flounder, and snook, I I highly recommend you join us in the Salt Strong Insider Club where there's a ton of information on how to become a better inshore fisherman with artificial lures. So guys, thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong and wear the line today